CentralValleyTalk.com. We've been live and local since right around 11 o'clock this morning. And I always say we save the best for last here at Central Valley Talk. Our last guest today joining us live in our Tower District studios. Give it up for Roxanne, the creator of Bright Side of Celiac, right? Right. And am I, am I saying it right? Celiac. Celiac. Yes. I, knew, I had a feeling that I messed that up. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. Um, this has been pretty much, I want to say, a dream to be, be here to send out a message to our celiac community. And I appreciate the invitation. Oh, our pleasure. So let's start with... Um, Let's start with what celiac is for folks that don't know. Absolutely. So celiac, what celiac is, it's an autoimmune disease, a very severe autoimmune disease that pretty much is genetic. And so with that being said, uh, my husband and I, and I'll get to the story of how this got about bright side of celiac, um, but it is back to a genetic autoimmune disease, and it's by the consumption and digestion, I should say, of, of wheat, of gluten, that happens to get in our intestines and with too much gluten and into our intestines, it can lead to serious health problems. And this is something that you don't know you have unless you go to your doctor and they have you go to a specialist, um, a gastologist actually. So this is something that many people don't know. They may not even have the symptoms of mm -hmm. celiac. And so, and it goes across board to eight, the age group. It can be from couple of months until mm -hmm. over 50 and 60 and you don't know until you consume gluten and you have those symptoms if you don't have symptoms it can be a very quiet severe autoimmune disease so t tell me a little bit about yeah why you, you, you and your husband really wanted to dive into this Ab what's the personal connection absolutely so my son my 10 year old son Jaden he was diagnosed with celiac okay. almost about two years ago and with his, with our story, it's quite different, but quite, I want to say, a very rewarding story. Mm -hmm. So he had the symptoms of severe stomach pains, and he, we thought, okay, he has a stomach ache. But you know your kid. As a parent, you know your kiddo when they're not feeling well. You have that parent intuition, which you just need to go on. And so we did. And we took him to his pediatrician and she referred him to one of the best, I have to say, that Fresno has for, pe for children, um, a specialist that ran blood work. And that's when first it came about that he had very high levels to what you would have as a celiac diagnosis. To get even further, we had an endoscopy done so that was very hard when you have your child, you know, go in for th that type of procedure. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was very clear that he has celiac disease. When someone is diagnosed, when a kiddo is diagnosed, even an adult who's mm -hmm. diagnosed with celiac, it's very much, um, here's your diagnosis, mm -hmm. here's your paperwork, this is what you have. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. And so that's, even though we had a great specialist, it was still us as parents, we needed that support, that guidance. We knew of nothing of celiac. No one in our family has been diagnosed with celiac. He was the first. So my husband and I, we both got tested. We both got our blood work done and it came out negative. So the thought of how is this a genetic autoimmune disease? How is this if we don't have it? They can go past from aunts to uncles. It could even be having a gluten sensitivity, right? So. We were looking for support groups. We were looking for resources, services, restaurants, eating out that we take for granted because food is something that is so special for us, even as a family, every family, because that's part of a community. That's where we gather. That's where we eat. That's where we talk about our day and get together with friends and family. Now we're making a whole 180 adjustment without no one to kind of lead us through a, uh -huh. this direction. So I reached out to National Celiac Association, okay. and um, I really wanted to find resources in my community so I can, be, I can get help in finding out where do I go first? How do I get linked with a nutritionist? Are there nutritionists that help families and kiddos? And it seemed like the nutritionists were really based on those who have diabetes, those who have heart disease, which is great, but there was nothing linked to celiac. It was kind of like 
I would have to look online to find out what to do. So with Nath National Celiac Association, they mentioned to me, you know, Roxanne, there is no one, no contact person that we have in our association out in the Central Valley. Wow. There are some from many in Southern California, Northern sure. California, mm -hmm. but not Central me. Valley has none. Wow. My mouth dropped. And I said, this couldn't be. Uh, from my background, um, I'm an educator and mental health professional, so resources and services are vital. Yeah, it's everything. It's everything yeah. for everyone. Did, did this, you bringing up that point, um, did this really affect your son mentally? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, he felt isolated. Mm. He was very upset that food that he knew, which... As much, and even as adults who have diagnosed celiac, you know what wheat and food that you used to have tastes like, right? It's not like maybe someone younger, three to five, they're not really knowing that whole taste of good pizza, you know, the good pasta and bread he used to like, and just what it used to be. So being that is something new and different, he definitely felt, and they even, why me? Why do I have to be different? Why can I be normal? And just making sure he knew, buddy, no one's normal, right? Like, there's no normal person, but his normalcy was gone. And so to see that, I know, too, that mental health as well affects many kiddos and adults with medical conditions. And if it's not addressed soon, it can spiral, mm -hmm. right? So moving fast forward, I was talking to my husband, and we just really brainstormed and really had this real talk, deep conversation of what can we do, not for our kiddo, but for families, mm -hmm. for kids that we know who have celiac, that have nothing here in the, in the Central Valley. I Googled, I don't know how many times for support groups, and I, there's a couple places that did mm -hmm. two, three years ago, but nothing active. Mm -hmm. And so we created Bright Side of Celiac, because there is a bright side sure. to celiac. And that being said, it means eating differently, but it means eating more naturally. A lot of processed mm. food going out. No gluten. No gluten. None. Yeah. Our house turned into 90% gluten free. Wow. Uh, my wow. daughter, she is not diagnosed yet. We wow. will be taking her in in this coming year because okay. she's five. Right. So they suggest five to six years old. D and does it run in families or? That's what the history of celiac is it's a hereditary autoimmune disease. Even wow. though my husband and I didn't show in our blood work. Right. But you passed it, maybe. Right. Mm. We could still have a gluten sensitivity. Okay. So I so did that test, uh -huh. the gluten sens the sensitivity test, yeah. food sensitivity, and I am gluten sensitive. You are? Yes, but oh. I'm not celiac. Isn't that weird? It is. Wow. Fascinating. Yes. Huh. So my body does react to when I have wheat, mm -hmm. but it is not severe as my son Jaden as having a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis. Mine is a less than, um, I should say my levels aren't going to be storming high if I can, you know, if I eat uh, regular bread. Um, I might get a tummy ache or I might feel a little different. Mm -hmm. For the consumption of it, I should not eat as much because there is a sensitivity. So going to restaurants and bakeries here in Fresno, there are many great gluten-free mm. restaurants and bakeries, but not a whole facilitated gluten-free restaurant and bakery, which I should say that only serves gluten-free food. Not, not, there's nothing like there's that. There's nothing. There should be. That would be, good, that would be a good business right. model. <laughs> I, I've met a lot of, people. exactly. Yeah. I met people who have that vision. Yeah. Um, they feel like there's not enough mm -hmm. compared to like the Bay Area of people who eat sure. gluten-free. Mm -hmm. um, because some get a little confused. They think when I order gluten-free, even for myself, I, I've gotten asked, um, okay, so is it okay if I mix, you know, this food with that food, mm -hmm. and I have to be very assertive when it comes to Jaden. Utensils have to be separate utensils. There has to be a designated area where they make this gluten-free pizza or this gluten-free sandwich. Uh -huh. You have to wear gloves. Right. You, there's all, and this is a process that I need to do all the time or call ahead. 
we have a great Jersey Mike's Pyology. I want to do a little shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> they are amazing. And they have a designated area and they so do an great. amazing job. Me yeah, Neds as well. Free bread and, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but going up to the Bay Area or even Cayucas, Pismo, they have restaurants that are 100% gluten free. Yeah. And he feels like, wow. I mean, these, all these people may not be celiac, but all these people are eating gluten-free food. And that gives him some sort of, like, hope. Mm-hmm. And he's asked that, Mom, how come Fresno can't have something like this? And I believe we sure will. Right. We sure will soon because I've been in contact with many people in our community who I thought I was just reaching out to families and kids. But there have been adults, right, who are diagnosed with celiac. And it have been such a great outpourings to me and to my family. And so this is what the Central Valley needs. Right, right. And right now we're a social media platform. Um, we have an Instagram and a Facebook. Mm-hmm. I don't give out. I'm not a doctor, so I don't give out, you know, uh, medical. Sure. Any type of medical diagnosis. But I can give you services and resources on our page and on our Instagram. We have a website as well. Yeah, I see that. A bright side of celiac.org. Yes. Cool. And so we help families set up even to connect with their schools because I'm very vocal and advocate in my kiddos' school. Mm-hmm. So we have a wellness plan for Jaden. And if you need a 504 plan and how to set that up, um, because that is a legal document that stays with your kiddo. So in case celiac interrupts their academics, because you sometimes get sick if you get gluten sure. accidentally right, right, and you right. miss school mm-hmm. and your grades may drop. So a 504 really protects the kiddo. Um, and if you don't want to have a 504, you can do a wellness plan. But it's also bringing awareness to the administrators and their teachers, which has been amazing. Yeah. And it's been a pretty awesome experience because they're gaining a lot of knowledge as well. Um, I've also reached out to mental health professionals because a lot of their clients may not have celiac, some do, mm-hmm. but they have medical conditions such as gluten sensitivity. And a lot of these um, conditions can lead to high anxiety and depression with kiddos and adolescents. And so you may not be celiac, mm-hmm. right? And that doesn't mean you can't be part of our community. Um, you may be gluten sensitivity, you may have a family or a friend who you know, and you wanna get more awareness and more understanding about this. Or you may be a professional who works with clients and patients and kiddos. And this type of awareness and psychoed is important. So that way we can all be inclusive when it comes with the celiac community and understand how to navigate a little bit better than how we've been. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited just to have the followers that I have mm-hmm. from our community and also from Santa Barbara. Pismo, Cayuca, San Francisco. Bakersfield, maybe. Bakersfield, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. And they've been really giving a lot of great information and a lot of good, um, I guess, advice on how to move forward when it comes with with the vision that I have, um, what Bright Side of Celiac means, and how we can be so much more empowering here in our community with our families. We are just getting started. Uh, Keep us posted on everything. Of course, uh, like uh, Bright Side of Celiac on Instagram, uh, or I guess follow on Instagram. Uh, You guys are on Facebook, though, too, where you can't like. Uh, And then uh, brightsideofceliac.org. Yeah, like I said, keep us posted. This is great. Uh, Thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank Um, you very much. Merry Christmas. By the way, your uh, daughter's in studio with us. So (laughs) shout out to her. Uh, Shout out to your son and uh, uh, to your husband. And I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Absolutely. Me too. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm Austin Reed. That's going to do it for Central Valley Talk. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye.